all ears. I'd even buy one of your relatives if you're looking to sell. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a little joke. Trinkets, odds and ends, that sort of thing. Do come back. Let me guess. You want to talk? How about for a change you do something to... I mean, for me.
I rather enjoyed a little chat. You just let me know what you need. Do you I have something to say? Sure. What's on your mind? I don't think I should tell you how I really feel. I don't want to creep you out or anything. Yes, let's go. It's always good to see someone I can count on. You're someone who can get things done. I like that. Hey there. You remind me of a dog I used to know. I had to always shake him off of me as well.
Are you finished ogling the grotesque? I suppose I should be grateful you didn't simply attack me. I am one of the afflicted. I'd have been dead from this plague a year ago if not for Periite's protection. Returning to High Rock, our shepherd lost his way, and I fear Periite's wrath may consume those who remain with him. Kesh could tell you more. I just want out of Skyrim as quickly as possible. Talk to Raldith yet? She's like a mother to me. Did you see those guards? Get out of line and you'll have them to deal with. We're honest, hard-working folk here, and we don't suffer beggars or thieves. Do I detect a bit of jealousy in your tone? I would hardly blame you. What calling could be more noble than this? I see in your eyes that you think I jest. I assure you I don't. I am proud, and rightfully so, of the work we do here. Working the soil with your hands, seeing your seeds take root and grow, tending a herd. There is a joy in honest labor you won't find elsewhere. In Whiterun, mostly. Ennis handles the business arrangements, but I know that he has a few purchasers who give us a fair price. Ennis prides himself on his shrewd business schemes. For my part, I'm far happier working with cattle and crops than with people. Until next time. If you're thinking of setting up to farm, you pick the right place. Have you met Rorik? He owns these lands, and it's from him that our village gets its name. We've been friends for many years now. Rorik fought for the Empire in the Great War. He was gravely wounded, and so was brought before me. I was a healer then, you see. We were as close as kinsmen, and when Rorik returned home, I came with him. I am happy to spend my twilight years here with my good friend. Secret? What makes you think there's a secret? There are no secrets here, my curious friend. Our prosperity is simply the result of hard work, good fortune, and the blessings of the gods. How can we? We're a community of farmers, not fighting men. If not for the war, we might have enough guards in the hold to protect the settlements. That the dragons should return now is most unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I got enough trouble, so don't go adding to them. 
You look like you've seen your share of adventure. I envy you that. In fact, maybe you can help me with something. I want to be an adventurer like you. My father says I can't. He says he needs me to stay here and work the farm. And even if he did let me be an adventurer, we couldn't afford to buy armor. His name is Mralki, and he's the innkeeper here. I hope you could change his mind. Thank you. I can't stand the thought of being trapped in this village for the rest of my days. There's a certain way you have to pick crops. Can't just yank them from the ground. Can't complain. Just glad I can earn an honest living. I used to be a bandit, after all. It's weird, I know. Never thought I'd be anything but a lowlife. Used to spend all day lying around, thinking about all the fat nobles I'd loot. Well, one day this crazy Imperial walks right into the fort, talking some nonsense about how he's gonna turn us all into milk drinkers. <laughs> we all had a good laugh and threw him in the dungeon. Nope, and neither did the laughs. See? He had a sack full of books, instructions on how to farm crops, sell loot, stuff like that. We started calling him the Archmage of Snowberries. We set up a fake library, and every night we'd have someone read a chapter to the men. <laughs> it was a real hoot. But funny thing is, I wasn't really laughing. I was listening. Some of the stuff in there was garbage, but a lot of it was real useful, especially the stuff about money. I used to think I couldn't live off a farmer's wage. Now I realize I just didn't know how. Well, for starters, just some basic stuff about the price of food, what to sell and what to eat, and how fast everything spoils. You learn about which farms need the most help during what season and cheap places to sleep. Stuff like that. Things no one ever told me. The Archmage? No, no. I didn't want the other bandits to know my secret. One night, though, I did slip him a bottle of poison. Figured he was a dead man anyway. Might as well let him go out on his own terms. <sighs> Glad to hear it. Seems the gods owed him a favor, seeing as he saved my life. Nope. It'd be no use. I can't read. I had to trick one of the other bandits into reading the rest for me. He thought I wanted a good laugh. Probably helped that he was half drunk. Goodbye. You're gonna get it, Sissel. If you're thinking of setting what? up to farm, what did I, do? You pick I told you to weed the garden by sunset, and you didn't do it. Now you're in big trouble. Papa told you to do that, not me. Now leave me alone. If you beat up my sister, Sissel, I won't tell. I wish I could be an inventor like you and go wherever I want. Did you see those guards? Get out of line and you'll have them to deal with. Anything I can pick up for you on my next trip into the city, Eric? Thanks for the offer. Come on in. Just stoke the fire. Take a seat and get the cold out. My name's Yarborough, and yes, I do accept tips. I play Nord music mostly. They don't like it when I play anything else. No reason. I heard this place needed a bard, so here I am.
If you've got some business in Rorikstead, you should start by speaking to Juan. Sorry, I don't mean to be rude, but Juan's the one who deals with people. I'm afraid I lost my charm years ago. Yes, that's right. Look around you. Most of the lands you see are mine. Most of this I purchased while my comrades were fighting in the south, helping the Empire against the Aldmeri Dominion. Back then, nothing would grow here, and so the land was worthless. Now, thanks to the hard work and the gods' blessings, our farms prosper. Aye, that I did. I commanded a force of several dozen men, most of them levies from villages in this part of the hold. I damn near met my end in that war. An old Mary soldier ran me through with his blade and left me for dead. A healer named Joanne saved my life. He's been my closest friend ever since. I tell you, that man is a miracle worker. Not yet, anyway, though it certainly could. With most of the Hold's fighting men committed to the war, there are fewer swords to keep the road safe from brigands and wild beasts. And of course, as the war drags on and supplies run low, our ample fields and stores of food will make a tempting target for desperate men. The best we can hope for, a swift end to the conflict. The longer the war goes on, the worse it will be for all of us, I'm afraid. All right, then. Good evenings. Listen to me, stranger, and listen well. The Khajiit caravans are not to be trusted. Sanyon says betrayers shave their rear ends to resemble the Nord ones they are fond of flicking. But Zajira, she is loyal to the Taumon. Her rear end is not shaved. Blight? Sajira does not know what kind of skooma you are having, but she would like you to share. The Savior has brought back the moons to elsewhere. The Eight have crowned them the true rulers of Tamriel. Zajira tells them where to hunt the night. I'm not saying it's my business, but I have to ask. Why are you so cruel to my girls? You're right. Yes, Zajira does good work to the bodies west of the board. That was her doing. People come to pray to the false god. Zajira sometimes warns them that Talos is but a man. Yet still they pray. Zajira has no choice but to tell the saviors of their blasphemy. She thinks it would be best if they die. Then they can meet Talos in the next world, where he is just another man scratching himself and smelling his fingers. Yes, Zajira finds Talos worshippers and reports them to Sanyon. Right now, she is shadowing the one called Sonia. She is waiting for her to leave the inn and contact her fellow Talos worshippers. Zajira has waited a very long time. Zajira agrees, but these are not the innocents. These are Talos worshippers. The saviors of the moon have stated they must be punished. Zajira does not like the killing so much, but as she has said before, sometimes the only way to open their eyes is to close them. All right. He is a Talmor agent and Zajira's friend. She sends him letters by courier. It has the list of names and locations of potential Talos worshippers. Yes, Sanyon like then kills the infidels and makes a tableau. That is a fancy elf word for a murder party. This gets the attention of the Stormcloaks, who then redouble their efforts the against the Empire. The saviors get stronger, and Zajira gets right. a skooma. Everybody wins. How about you keep your nose out of it? You keep on like oh no, they cannot transport the skooma to Zajira. It is not allowed. For this, there are peddlers in Sanyon's employ. You may see them on the road from time to time. They smell of hay and skivas. Zajira did not say this. That is the meat talking does not have nice things to say like the skooma. Every 
mandais. The scuba has told Zajira as much. This makes her feel better about all the dying. The girls of yours are growing like weeds, Lemkew. Yes, all right. like weeds, they're nothing but trouble. They are ah, traitors. Nothing like fresh air and honest labor to bolster the spirit. True enough. As neutral as the dark side of Secunda, for I have witnessed first hand the sale of weapons to none other than storm clogs. Hush, Zajira knows this, the stranger knows this, and the Imperials know this. But the storm clocks do not. And there is one in this very inn. But to your point. Madran does not help these storm clocks because the saviors ask him to. He does it for gold. I'm not saying it's my business, but I have Do to you ask. not know? Are they so are the wielders clocks? of the dawn magics, ancient right. spells that brought the business. moons back to elsewhere to and saved all of Tamnia. You keep on like you are, you'll end up with two daughters who will hate you. Ha! And what would a witless oak like you know about Why must you children? mock Zajira, stranger? She is only answering your questions. The Talmor have been good to Zajira. They have allowed her to live her life, whereas others only scold. Why? Do you have some? Why are we wasting time talking? That is not kind of you, stranger, to get Zajira's hopes up. She will have to wait for Sanyon. Thanks for the offer, Juan. But I'm saving up for a new sword. Do yourself a favor and don't have children. They're good for nothing at all. Never realized alchemists by skeever tales. I used to just kill them for the meat. I hope you could change my father's mind. He can be a little stubborn. Speak, but the scents are warm. Yes. Everything Maratua has is for sale. Take a look. Naruto is here to either buy or sell. If you are not here for business, there's nothing else to discuss. Swift hunting, friend. How can I help you? Ah! Oh, you frighten me, traveler. Anything you shouldn't just you greet someone head. unexpectedly. Thanks for the offer, Juan. But I'm saving up for a new sword. So my brethren used to tell me. But I feel it's warranted. I don't care if Ulfric himself bent his knee and asked me to join the cause. I'm staying inside where it's safe and warm. Was a Stormcloak. Now I'm just an ordinary shut-in, never going to leave this inn, as long as Meraki is willing to have me. Maybe I can marry his son, and then they'll let me stay here forever. He's nice enough. Got good hair, good teeth. And the inn will be his when Milwaukee's gone, so I wouldn't have to pay for a better a room. I'm cursed. It's been with me since I was a young child. It's the only explanation for what happened at Helgen. No, this was before. I'd just sworn the oath. But, as one of the less talented sisters, I was tasked mostly with retrieving supplies from the city. It happened on a Morndas. I was traveling on the road west to Helgen, when pearls of snow began to pelt my brow. I no sooner blinked when the snowstorm came thundering from above, except there was a piece of black crouched further down the road, a woman wearing a hooded robe, holding a small child. Indeed, 
I swore an oath to Ulfric Stormcloak, my brothers and sisters, but my oath to the gods came before this menial task. Thanks for the offer, Tron. I'm saving up for a new sword. I called out to her. I was relieved when she stood up, but the relief was short-lived. She scurried off into the forest. It was no place for a child. The sun was dimming, and in the winter, the night is as fast as it is long. The air was cold, but not the kind of cold that pimples your skin. No, this cold was raw enough that you could feel it pass through your teeth, even when your mouth was closed. As I said, no place for a child. So I hurried after her. Best I could tell, she was headed towards Orphan Rock, the one place every Nord child in Helgen fears. I, a Hagraven's nest, but it isn't Hagraven's that made this story. It was Nord men and women, telling tales to get their children to pray to the Nine. The story went that if you forgot to pray, Arkay would send Hagraven to snatch you from your bed. Children were told that all the witches that hunt Orphan Rock were once boys and girls like them. As a young woman grown, I've long since outlived such juvenile tales, but my hand couldn't help but reach for my weapon. Darkness set in. I bit my lip, trying to keep my focus on the woman and the child. I followed their tracks through the narrow passageway formed by the rock, but when I came out on the other side, the trail had vanished. I found myself standing in a plot of follow dirt, empty save a rock marker. I called out again to the woman, but there came no answer. Then I called out once more, and then came a reply. It was a knock, like knuckles rapping against a door, and with each knock, the noise grew louder. No, not louder, closer. I swiveled around, and in my panic I dropped my mace. It wasn't until I'd reached for it that I saw it. Anything I can pick up for you on my next trip? The snow jumping off the dirt, Thanks as if the, the knocking wasn't coming from I'm behind me, but beneath. Higher and higher, until it was right under my feet. And that's when the clouds shifted, and the moonlight lit the marker in front of me. It wasn't a rock marker. It was a grave marker. I did what any sane Nord would have done. When I got back to the camp, Father, the quartermaster demanded to know where I'd been I know and what had happened to the time. supplies. I've said In truth, time. no Always explanation would suffice. It's I just as well, because even I can't explain what was under my feet that night. I'm not afraid of the dangers out there. The only thing I'm afraid of is wasting my life on this farm. Yes, that's your mother's side Is of the that family. what it was? I'm Stay not sure, one more but I wouldn't that's put it I past ask. me. I am cursed after all. It's always been a part of me. You see, my mother told me that I nearly died in childbirth. As a result, part of my soul was close to the void, and the wandering dead were drawn to me in their confusion. Yet, she told me not to worry. As long as my heart was full of life, it would fill that empty part of my soul and ward off the dead. Her advice was unnecessary, as a child's spirit is as stout as Shore's bones. It wasn't until I was a girl of twelve, my heart broken by a boy I loved, that at first I yearned for death. It did. It's silly to say. Because as adults, we experience things a thousand times more hurtful than a simple heartbreak. But never in my years did I feel a stronger sense of grief, or a deeper wound, than when he said the words, No. I wanted to die more than anything, and our case saw fit to grant my wish. Indeed. That night, as I lay in my bed, the air was so cold, and even in the middle of the sun's height, the I huddled under the covers, trying to stave off the cold. I had reached a point where I felt I could sleep, when I heard it. The breathing. No matter how much I shrunk into my covers, I couldn't avoid that foul hiss. 
but I dare not look. Then came the sound of footsteps walking to my door. I was about to go into shock when I heard my mother's voice. I leapt out of bed and ran to the door, flinging it open. And there she was. My mother, holding a candle, and standing over her shoulder, was a wraith. I didn't. I did what my mother always told me to do. I wanted to live, then more than any other time, as two lives were on the line. Father, and it worked, until I became a I storm cloak. Going, I think all that talk of dying said, and going to Sovngarde brought it all back. Now, much safer here at the farm with me. No, I'll starve to death first. I am a daughter of Skyrim. I don't fear death, yeah, I fear fear. And spiders. But everyone's afraid of crawlies. Maybe. But it's not as if I don't work for what he gives me. I'm the unofficial tavern wench around here. Sweeping, washing, and giving this place the occasional woman's touch. And if a customer gets fresh, I can wield my mace better than any broom. Oh, lots of things, although they usually happen at night, and when I'm alone. But I can't take that chance of them happening when others are around. I'd go out and help Redleth pick out cabbage heads. Only they wouldn't be cabbage heads. They'd be the heads of little children. Then maybe Ragnar will ride by, still making the journey to Whiteworn as a headless phantom. Or maybe I'd visit Rorik's Manor, and that bear he has mounted on his wall will come alive and reach down and bite him right while he's cooking. Even here there are times I feel like my presence is a danger. Sometimes when I look up at the animals mounted above Milwaukee, I see the eyes move. As if someone were looking at me from behind them. There's a lot of tales parents tell their children to get them to eat their greens or pray to the divines. One of them is the story of the Hagraven of Orphan Rock. They used to say if you didn't pray to the Nine, Arkay would send the old hag to kidnap you in your sleep. The witches of Orphan Rock are said to be the grown-up versions of all the children who forgot their supper-time prayers. As a young woman grown, I've long since outlived such children. juvenile tales, but my hand wear. couldn't help but reach for I've my weapon. Hmm? About time. Getting a head full of ideas about adventure and glory. I'm old enough to decide how to live my life. And I'd be honored to wear your armor. If you just let me. I'm strong sad. enough to handle it. <laughs> strong, yes. How clever are you? I'm sure it's I tell you what. Had a competition for beauty. You can open the lock on my chest. I would easily win first prize. Although, I'll take hopefully, your I have something if better I win, to contend with I than a gold. life as an adventurer. And with no objections from you. If you need a meal or room, I've got both. Bit of advice. Folks here don't care for magic or those that use it. If you're intent on it, check at the college up in Winterhold. Either that or go see the Jarl's court wizard. Here, take a look at this. Some of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. My son? Eric? What about him? Did something happen? Is he all right? But the world is a dangerous place. Eric has no idea what he's getting himself into. What's more, he's got no armor. I'll have to save up the money for it. You would give your own coin to help my son? I'm moved by your compassion. Your kind deed will not go unrewarded, my friend. Tell Eric I've changed my mind and will visit Whiteburn soon to fit him for armor. Did you have any luck talking to my father? I can't thank you enough, friend. I hope you'll come back to Rorikstead soon and pay me a visit. Maybe we can swap stories about our adventures over a mug of ale at the inn. I'd better get going.
Some people complain about farm work, say it's too dull. Me, I've had a little too much excitement for one lifetime. Do you have something to say? What would you like to talk about? Words can't describe how I feel right now. Yes, let's go.